Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got from film school, mm -hmm. NYU, how you got into film school at NYU, and then your journey on to uh, innovative. You know what? I I don't even know how I got into film school. <laughs> Was it always your dream to go to film school? I, I, I loved watching TV and movies mm -hmm. when, when I was younger, and I thought, this is this will be fun. I'll go to film school. I'll uh, be a writer director. Mm -hmm. And I think you know this, but my first month there was was a disaster because I just realized I'm not that creative. Mm -hmm. I can't write, or I, I'm not as imaginative as, as I thought I was. Mm -hmm. And you know, all my classmates had 20 ideas. I was struggling with one. <laughs> and at that point. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't make any films in film school. Did you realize that? <laughs> any of your own films? Any of my own films, yeah. Because yeah. I, I thought, I, I really can't do this. And I, and I thought, uh, i got to figure out a different way, but I want to stay in the program. Because when we were in school, back in 1998, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they didn't have any other, they didn't teach anything else other than being a writer, director, and actor. Uh, or even somewhat a producer. Yeah. yeah. And so then I went to the dean and I said, look, I want to stay in the program, but I don't want to make a film. David Irvin. Mm -hmm. And he said, that doesn't make sense. How are you going to make a film school if you're not going to make a film? And so well, I'll get, hopefully I can get graded on working on every other capacity on everyone else's films. And he said, all right, that's kind of interesting. See if let's do it. He let me stay in the program. I mean, well, one sight and sound film, actually, if I remember. Okay. And, um, and I gave my allotment to other people who was working with. So you actually made a sight and sound film? I mean, one, yeah, and it was so bad. Right, because you're supposed to be fine or yeah. something, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. What was bad about it? I, I had no story. I just started. It, I remember the night before it was due, I just shot just a random scene and it was not good. There was no, there was no creativity there. Was there, was there, was, there were actors in a dorm room or something. I don't remember what it was. It was that bad. Um, but, but yeah, you know, and you know, Mike Dauphin, he and I teamed right. up and Tamir and Muhammad later on we teamed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just started, you know, being able to shoot, edit other, other, uh, other classmates' films and that was it. So, now, when you let's let's I'm going to go back again a little bit because I think it's true for a lot of us. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody about how I got to film school mm -hmm. and sort of came in with people who had already been in film and were in love with film, right. and like uncles and relatives and blah blah blah, and yeah. had all of this money and support right. and everything right. else. And I think for a lot of people of color, um, you're kind of like. First of all, you might even be the first person who's been to college, period, let alone to film school, which is film school, kind of sure. like, that's not even in the university, yeah. like, what are you doing? Um, so <laughs> I'm curious as to like what kind of support you might have had, encouragement, if, if you did. Um, like, when you told your parents you're going to film school, they're like, what? My, my mom was, was so supportive. I mean, I think she still knows what I do to this day, but she was so supportive of me to go to film school. Um, so do it. Okay. Um, and because nobody in my family is even in entertainment. Mm -hmm. And um, so she just let me do it. So when you were flailing mm -hmm. in college, yeah. and then looking back at your family, and everyone's like, hey, sorry, can't help. What was well, I never told them how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> Because you were determined to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so then, how did you happen upon agency, as opposed to anything uh, else? You know, I started interning a lot, and a series of internships led me to where I am now. Um, you know, they gave me like 24 credits in, in a couple of semesters to just work full time. So basically, I wasn't even in class. Mm -hmm. And. One thing led to another. I started working at this company called USA Films, and the my boss at the time was best friends with uh, the head of my company now, Innovative. And she said you should work in an agency. For some reason, she thought whatever I was doing was translatable and conducive to working at 
talent agency. And so she got me uh, an internship there. I was there basically the whole senior year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, other than what I was going around with you, yeah. <laughs> and um, then they gave me a job when I graduated. And I've been there going on 16 years now. Um, mm -hmm. And so what were you doing there when you first started? At the company, uh, I was working in the mail room. And what that, that entails is I was actually sorting mail, delivering mail, delivering packages, um, preparing all the scripts and packages that clients needed, and a lot, a lot, of, a lot of physical work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then tell us a little bit about how you were doing it up. Uh, when I graduated, they, they, they promoted me to an agent's assistant. Okay. And then from there, I spent two years on someone's desk. Answering phones, taking mm -hmm. messages. Answering phones, taking messages, reading scripts for them, um, helping with ideas on, on clients' projects. And then after that, they, they promoted me. And they, they, they promoted me to be a full agent. I was 25. Wow. And so, as a full agent, do you get to choose, uh, first of all, who you represent? you represent actors? you represent I, amazing? I don't represent actors. You don't represent actors? No, I only represent actors. You only represent actors. Only represent yeah. actors. Okay. But okay. nowadays, um, there are a lot of people who are more high finish. They write and direct also, but primarily what I like doing is work with actors. Okay. And is that a choice that you made or is that the company made for you? It was a choice I made, and, and I think I... I've gotten pretty entrenched in it, and so it's just going well. Mm -hmm. And so, but you're an agent, you're not a manager. Right. What's the difference? It's just the title. I think nowadays it's completely, uh, uh, the line is completely blurred in what we do when managers do. Except, actually, no, because managers are able to produce their clients' works and other works, and agents, are, agents by law are not. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Why yeah. is that? Loophole. Because mm -hmm. talent agencies were, are, have to be licensed by the, by the states, and managers are relatively newer. I'd say within the last I don't know, 20, 30 years, they really rose up in, in a meaningful way, and there's just no regulations. So basically, they do the same job, but they, they can produce. So does that mean if I'm working with an actor, their manager will or must come on the project as a producer? Not all the time. It's, I think it's up to the client. But a lot of times where the client says, well, I don't know what you bring to the table, you're still a manager, but you're not mm -hmm. a producer. Other times, uh, some companies are well known to be production management companies and it benefits them to have them on. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Um, that's just shot my hypothesis of the difference between it and <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that you clarified this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, so how does an artist go about landing an agent? Uh, I don't think there's any set way. It's anything. Uh, I get referrals from a lot of people, or I go see the shows, or I see a film or, or a TV show that they're on, and I just you know, I get an instinct that I want to work with them. And is that, I mean, what, so the instinct is based on at talent, I'd like to imagine, mm -hmm. but also I like, guess some ability or? Yeah, all of it. And is it also based on like, well, I have a lot of women right now, so I'm not really taking females, or I have a lot of, you know, women. Um, no, I, I, I don't like working in quotas. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're talented, if I want to work with somebody, it, 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 it doesn't matter who else, who I may have. It's, you, you try to look at people as as, uh, as, as singular entities. You know, it's not a situation where I'd, I'd say, I have, too, you know, I have too many guys, too many girls, or I have too many ones, too many brunettes, or I don't have this area or that area. Mm -hmm. That's not the way I generally do But well, there are some people I imagine who might And so, okay, so I'm an artist. And I want you to be my agent. I've heard about all the amazing work that you do. How am I, you know, just sending you mass emails every day? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> uh, 
right job for you. And you will notice that anytime the agent moves companies, they usually just go with that agent rather than staying at the company. Right. Right. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. <clears throat> and how um, how can a producer who doesn't have a casting director mm -hmm. work with the agents to pass the book? Uh, it's 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 different because if you're a known producer or if you have a couple of credits that you can you know can count on people know you from, you can, you can probably get just submissions or ideas from agents and managers. Mm -hmm. But if you're if this is your first project and you don't know anybody but you have a great script, it's it might be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it, it will, will be harder, harder but uh, I'd say at that point, trade on anybody who you know can make an introduction for you. But at the same time, uh, getting a casting or an award in, in, in those early stages, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of credits behind you, I, I, I would try to convince a casting director to take you on. And you can find good ones who would do it out of spec because they believe in the script, but they're They'll, they'll really help out. They'll, they're real advocates for, for, for films that, that they really like. So you're saying basically, if you don't have a lot of credits or if yeah. it's like kind of your first time around, it's probably it's easier to go, like to try and convince a casting director to yes. come on board. Yes, my opinion mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, I mean, my, my, I don't know if I should say perspective, but it seems to me like as for my actor friends, like the ones who are sort of focused on working, especially in LA or on bigger shows, um, on you know, on network T V or whatever it is, then you definitely I mean there's certain things like you just need to have, like you're not gonna get hired unless you do have an agent. But for those of us who are on the East Coast and doing mostly independent, is it is there a place where it can actually be a hindrance to have an agent? Uh, not, not, sh not sure I follow. Well, I, like I'm wondering mm -hmm. how much, because as an agent mm -hmm. or a manager, your relationship with the talent is to get them work right. so that you can get paid. Mm -hmm. So, but if, yeah. they, if the talent is trying to work or is doing mostly independent work that may not come with a whole lot of money. They're not doing Broadway, they're not right. doing like, you know, yeah. Law and Order when it was in New York or whatever. Right. Then I feel like your agent, if I had an agent, they'd probably be trying to send me more towards sort of LA um, focused jobs than oh, smaller indies where it's questionable as to how much I'm getting paid and therefore questionable how much right. you're getting paid. I, I think I think it depends on on uh, on the actor because um, doing a movie that pays a hundred dollars a day but is an incredible film with uh, you know a really hot up and coming director is actually worth more than being on NCIS LA. It just is, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I, I never and 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 I I know that you know my reputation would would uh, confirm mm -hmm. that is. I don't tell people to take money jobs just for the sake of what I need or it, just because it's sheer dollar amounts. I think I, I'm in a nice position mm -hmm. where I can help make pure casting decisions mm -hmm. and, and I can be material based. Uh, a small independent film that goes to Sundance would do way more than being on a terrible show. Mm -hmm. right. And that's the truth. Do you have any... Um, fun, or maybe not fun, success <laughs> stories. <laughs> you know, like an example of a client that you had that mm -hmm. did fabulous things with your recommendations. The, the, one, the one guy who I'm working with now who is just having the, the greatest, you know, mid-life mid, mid career is a guy named Sterling Brown. Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he did Chris Darden on the OJ FX miniseries, mm -hmm. and now, it's just over. He's getting everything done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Darden. 
Chris Darden. He won the Emmy for that, and now he's on This Is Us. He's just been doing movie after movie, too. And is that a casting call that you, is that yeah. a casting call that Well, the you way make? we work is we all work as a group of representing our, our clients. Uh -huh. And that's one that comes up that uh, is, is such a, a lucky opportunity, but he's also so skilled and so amazing that he scored it from it. Mm -hmm. You know, you had, you had to have someone making an OJ documentary, to casting someone who sort of looks like Darden. Mm -hmm. He fit the bill, but he was incredible and a lot mm -hmm. of his luck. But he had the skills to to, to make to make it um, to make it big. Nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and do you all, as an agent, do you also look for other kinds of opportunities for your clients, like um, product placement type yeah. deals mm -hmm. and? Do, uh, do voiceovers, endorsements, uh, on-camera commercials. Does that mean that you have like a long, like a long list of possible, you know, Tiffany's and whoever else that uh, might be looking for folks? Like, how do you yeah. even do that? Oh, you know what? A lot of them come come to them, come to the actors. Oh, a lot of yeah. the products come mm -hmm. to the actors. Because say say at Tiffany's, they they don't necessarily need ideas to them. If they want someone, they usually go after somebody. You know, uh, a guy, who, like a guy. We were up Tom Brady, and he gets a lot of endorsements his way, mm -hmm. but he doesn't do everything. But a lot of that comes with the territory of just sifting through offers mm -hmm. and, and making sure what's right for his brand is is out there. And then you manage that relationship with the with the company. Mm -hmm. when, what yeah. you have an ongoing role, I suppose, with it. Uh, with that relationship, whatever maintenance it needs, I think sometimes when they just do a campaign, it's and it's commercial, it airs and it's done with. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if it's an ongoing thing where uh, there's other parts to that deal, then yeah, you just, you just stay in touch with everybody. And then, do you do like cleanup if, for example, the relationship goes bad? Where the product goes you try out. you try to avoid that but sometimes <laughs> yeah you, you do have to run interference they're mm -hmm. caught on camera doing questionable things and what is that your job or is that uh, you call in a PR person or well if, if they do something criminal or something, <laughs> something else, but <laughs> if it's a situation where someone gets photographed doing a uh, Wearing wearing jeans at for a brand they don't endorse, <laughs> that's a problem too sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've had a situation where someone had a jeans campaign, and um, you know she didn't know any better. But she was at a, a party that, that was sponsored by some someone else, and someone said, "Here, hold this up." It happened, and they got let go. Mm. Yeah. It happens because wow. they're like, "Well, why would we pay you all this money if this person just got it for free?" <laughs> oh, the word. Those aren't the fun times, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what about um, letters of attachment from clients that would help a producer find funding? How does that work? Um, you know, depending on who the client is, yeah, we, we would do that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, it's, it's, it's so loose. I think it helps a filmmaker who were who are really behind and, um, you know, hopefully someone's name helps. We do, we do letter of attachments. Okay. Does everyone know what a letter of attachment is? Okay. So, for example, I have this great script and I want his client, it would be ideal for his client to be my actor, but I don't really have the money and everything together yet. But it's just kind of like a letter to say, like when I get the money together, yeah. then I'll have a formal offer. So it's a letter to say that we're interested in each other. But also, you can use that to take the producers and say, right. look, I have this attack, uh, uh, the actor attached. Right. So you know, hopefully, it helps your project and helps lend credibility or or you know visibility to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what about moving forward from here? What's the trajectory for Ken Lee? Uh, hopefully clients keep growing and um, I, I love what I do. Do you have any thoughts of, I mean, maybe it's a cliche thing mm -hmm. to like start your own agency? No, I want someone to give me a space and <laughs> to take care of everything you need. <laughs> I, I really admire people who can start their own companies, but that is not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
I need to be taken care of. It's <laughs> 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 very, very lucrative, though, right? Your own company, hmm? your own company, is very lucrative. Yeah, but it comes with all, its own. It comes with its own issues, and uh, okay. you know, you got to think about your own overhead, mm -hmm. uh, the payroll, managing oh. uh, your a staff yourself. Mm -hmm. Me, they, 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 they just take care of what I need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I imagine you probably wouldn't be able to spend as much yeah. time thinking about. Right, I don't want to do any. Clients. I don't want to do any real administrative work in that way. But, mm -hmm. um, but where where I do get to be a self starter is, you know, being you know representing my clients and choosing who I want to represent. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And what's the age range of your clientele? Uh, I'd say anywhere from 21 to, let's see, right now, someone who's 50. Do you represent any kids? No. No. I don't want to talk to any parents. <laughs> I don't want to talk to any of that. No. Other people in my office do it well. I never talk to anyone's parents unless, you know, they're congratulating me on something. <laughs> it's good to, to see that you're very clear on what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes a little too clear for other people. Yeah. Alright, well let's open up and see if we have any questions. Sure. Hi, Ken. Thank you. Damian, I'm an actor. Uh, so my question for you is, with regards to branding, how do you, how does that conversation start? Does it happen when, you know, you choose your talent? Do you guys have a meeting of minds? Well, let me ask you this, I hear that word a lot. What, what, what do you mean by branding? Branding, for me, um, like there, I have a certain brand in the sense that I carry myself a certain way. There's certain jobs as an actor that I do. Um, you know, my website and just the caliber of work I've done, my education and all that stuff is a package. And so when I choose to work with an agent, I usually um, we usually have to have a clear understanding about who I am as a person who I am as an actor, the type of work that I want to represent me. Um, so I think in those regards, branding becomes important. And not so much as type is different from branding, I think. Yeah, it is. But I, but I think that work gets thrown around a lot mm -hmm. too soon. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anyone has a brand until they're either so established that they're limited by it or they're only known by that thing. I think if you're starting out, if you're early on in your career, uh, I think it's still kind of flexible and malleable. And the thing is, I wouldn't confuse brand with stuff that you think you want to do. I think that those, those are different, uh, that's different terminology to me. And, but at the same time, you know, if you have a clear direction of what you want to do, mm -hmm. then that's that's something different and that's something admirable. Again, what I like to say to actors is I age in your aspirations. Meaning, if you know what kind of roles you want to play, that helps me with my job because then I'll know what to look out for. Right. But I also don't want to be the one who limits you by uh, by only sticking to the plan. If if I do see a role that's either you know casting against type, which I agree is, is something different, but I do have the right to you, you know, because it's just, I think it's a conversation between me and my clients about what is the best material possible, the best role possible. Um, I don't even know if I'm answering your question because I think the branding word is, I think it's, it's, it's sort of a misunderstood word. Yeah, I think like um, where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. and I won't take up much more time. No, we have a lot of time. Yeah, um, acting role, um, which would deviate from the brand or something that I'm building. Um, as, I don't know if that's if that clarifies. Yeah, preferences. Well, preference is different, but it's almost like okay. For instance, if I'm like, all right, a prime example. I think if, while you're getting established, that that's the word I, I, I needed. Thank you for that. It is it is the preferences of what you want to do. I think a brand comes much later when you're super well known and you're you're kind of known for certain things just uh, as as a general rule. You don't think it would you don't think a brand is preconceived and then you, I don't, I don't. you build it? You think it's created for you and then you stick to it? I do. Yeah. So what would you would you give an example like 
for example, like, you know how Denzel for a long time would like do no kissing scenes? Right. Is that? So I don't, that's not a brand. It's not that's a preference. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So do you have any examples uh, of what a brand is? Say, say uh, you know, Tom Brady, his brand is only high-end stuff. You know, he's not going to do a Kellogg's commercial. You know, don't bring this on wax right now, but he's not going to do, uh, you know, uh, a cereal commercial. You know, he's not going to sell Domino's pizza. And that that's part of the brand. Tom right. Brady applied? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm going to change the name of the room. Okay. But that's, that's a brand. Right. Um, it, or if, if, you know, who? Uh, Lupita. You know, she is a brand, right? Yeah, she's a brand. Because look, right. she is, she's also just, you know, all high-end stuff. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, I consider myself a real leader. <laughs> Listen, when you get to that point, yeah, you will have that brand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. Yeah. yeah. That's what we do. That's what we do. I'm on my way. She's, she's, she's with us for, for yeah. endorsements, and, and, uh, and that's part of her brand building is get high-end stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I get a lot of referrals from cast directors, producers, other actors, directors, and those are, those are what I, uh, those are some of the easiest meetings I have, or um, I watch a lot of theater, I go, I go see plays, I watch a lot of TV and I wonder who that person is, I see a lot of movies, same thing, um, but if someone who's brand new, who is sitting in front of me who doesn't know, I, I don't tell them to, to make any decisions. You know, it's kind of like my, my thing with uh, going to college. I, I shouldn't, you know, declare a major when I'm 17. Um, I think what, what happens is then it's, the cast is getting broader. Meaning if you're 21, and you're just starting out, or even, you know, if you're 30, 35, and you're, you're or, or whatever age, I think what happens is it's, then it becomes, right, what's either age appropriate or feels like it's your personality and I'll cast it as wide as possible and hopefully uh, we'll craft a career from that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't require people to tell me what they want to do right after that. Thank you. Love it. All right, so as an um, agent, like what, 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 determines, what determines your decision to, um, of what castings uh, a talent would, um, when a talent's been playing Especially if they're a beginner, like you just started, they just started out. Um, I, again, I, I just cast net wide. If, if, if it's age appropriate and it feels like you're, you're right for a part, I know, I know it's some, uh, some old subjective thinking does come into that play, but I think it's you're right for the part. I'll try to get you an audition. So basically, you just, you just give them like a broad, a broad, broad very broad in the game. Casting. Yeah. And then as a career develops and more success happens, you know, you got you have to filter it out a little more or you have to kind of narrow who you who we we should work with and who uh, who we probably won't what or what jobs we probably won't do. Okay. Hi. Uh, question, do you freelance and if you do, what's the role from freelance to being signed? Uh, I, I don't freelance no. because to me, uh, that only kind of works in commercials where you just need a visible or physical type. For me, if I'm freelancing with someone, that just means that uh, it, it's sort of like lazy representation mm -hmm. because then I'm only thinking about you when I think there's something completely spot on. Mm -hmm. And that's not building a career. That's not crafting a relationship. And it becomes a situation where, you know, don't call me. I'm going to call you when I think one world is right for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you want someone to take the, you want, you want someone to develop a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And, that, and I, I, don't, I don't think I think about um, people who might freelance on the, the, the top of my head. I just, you know, there's no way you're a priority at that point. So you rep for film and TV, but do you do commercial and print, or is that I, else? That's other people might do. I, I, I focus on film and television. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what happened, oh, there was another question actually earlier about um, for people who are writers and want to get their work to, not you, or maybe you, 
um, somebody in your agency, but it's not solicited, it's not coming through a well-known agency or right. well-known whoever. Mm -hmm. Is that is that even possible? Um, I don't think any agency will take on unsolicited materials, mm -hmm. which is so the legal yeah implications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is so hard. It either has to come through a referral, or again, you just might get lucky where someone sees a film of yours at a film festival and you direct it and you have no script and that's when you hand it to somebody. But uh, incoming emails or mailings, I don't think that happens with anybody. Mm -hmm. No company will touch those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about ferries? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, because, because say that you, you, know, you, you send those to, to somebody and then you realize that my idea is on the screen next and it, and you, know, mm -hmm. you think somebody would have stolen it, you can't be held liable for any of that. Okay. Well, so, um, referral basis, mm -hmm. that's by any chance somebody knew you personally, if I knew you mm -hmm. personally, then you can refer me. Right. But how would that relationship build when you can't basically hear an idea? That means you open to hear an idea. Uh, or hear an you, you mean you mean all right? So say that you have. I have a, a television. I never mm -hmm. worked on. Right. I actually went to LA. Went to the um, you know, film festival. They had the American Film Festival market, and then mm -hmm. I was telling this idea that I had from this other show I watched, and the log line I was telling a lot about was cracking up laughing. They said I got it, and then people who want to actually direct it, like independent directors, I said, oh, I want to jump on that. So I was, I was like, let me slow it down because this is good. I was just doing an idea out there, but I was getting so much fun. One lady, she was like cracking up for a long time, and then one guy was like, oh, you got to hear the vlog line. Yeah. So I told him, I said, man, I get this reaction just alone. But if you hear it yourself, you probably crack up. But at the, at the same time, I'm like, if you just slow it down, we write it first. Right. So with that, I'm going to go out I'm preparing the script, and I'm going to go out that film festival game, or maybe produced produce by a conference, make connections, but even you here, at the same time, that's what I'm basically looking for. It's, I got that kind of reaction. Like I said, I have a company called Sinosha Dynamics. Sinosha, I just like, like I said, I work because it means center of attention or attraction. And I only think everything I create is have to have those elements to it, like high concept. And I know, and you notice, like, I don't want to take all the conversation, but you notice how TV today is either stuff that already was successful, rush hour, training day. Right, right. Or something out of ordinary, out of so so much different. They're like, okay, let me check it out because high concept, like the sun is on and things of that nature. The cartoon mixed with with live action. That's something you've seen before. Or the last man on earth. Right. You know, they, so I have that kind of concept. It's it's a it's a crime, it's a crime comedy drama type. Like similar monk or. So do you have a question? Other? What's the question? Well, the question is, how can that? Before basically like, okay, I, I might spark the idea that I might have something good. Yeah, I think it's so rare that you give a lot of money to someone that, you know, they'll, they'll jump at that. I did get it. I'm not lying. I was like, if you hear it yourself, you see it's a high But is that support or is that somebody who's trying to make it? Mm -hmm. You know, when you tell a lot of money to somebody, you know, people there, they, they, they can like the idea and support it, but um, somebody who you want to make it, it's, it's, it's it's hard to get that done, I think, because you should probably have unless you're so established that all people need is an idea or a script or, or a pitch. You should have the script written in order to send it to people. But how do you once you have it written? How do you how do you get referred? How do you get referred? It, you know, use use your network of people. If someone has anyone that they know, don't, don't be uh, don't be shy. Ask them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just had a question about your um, your roster. Uh, how big is it? How many uh, talent do you work with? I'd say uh, the company probably works with 200 in New York, hmm. 300 in LA, and I point out you know, 15 to 20 myself. 15 to 20 yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, how how often are you sending your clients out a lot? Or um, is it Hopefully. Subjective for the project and people, or um, I, I think there's ebbs and flows to yeah. it, you know, because it's based on what's out there. Right. If it's yeah. pilot season now. Right? If it's pilot season now, yeah. and last year there may have been a ton of roles written for whatever reason for twenty year olds. Right. This year, 
maybe fewer. Um, I just think it's just what's out there. Mm -hmm. and, but hopefully a lot of people who I work with are busy, and so, you know, hopefully I'm, I'm able to put in a position to, to get a lot of auditions, but it's, I can't guarantee how many are in a week or a month. And, how, and of your clients, what's the ratio of sort of like more established versus newcomers that we may have? I'd say it's like 50-50, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of newcomers are come through our doors all the time. Mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, I mean, everyone's like pretty talented. And you know like how in school, like the common knowledge was that, at least as a director, mm -hmm. um, you want to make such an amazing product that, or a project that an agent will come find you, because otherwise, if I were to go look for an agent, I would have to pay them to take me on as a as a client. Is that something that still is in effect? Oh, I hope no one's paying any agent to take me on. Mm. You've heard of that happens? That I remember that was in Senior Colloquio. Wow. That um, was the advice given. That is illegal. No agent. <laughs> Yeah, the well, agents I mean, I don't are know not. if you're going to necessarily mm -hmm. like, th give them like cash dollars, right. but the idea was kind of like they'll value you more, or they'll be doing more for you if they're the ones who pursue you, mm -hmm. versus if you're the one who pursued the agent, then it's kind of like, okay, sure, you can join my agency. But are we talking about financials being <laughs> traded though? I remember that someone saying that I would have to pay an wow. agent. That's I went after the agent, and so the idea anyone. was get them to send that mm -hmm. answer can, and then right. wait by the podium. And <laughs> wow, this is the shadiest thing ever. No, no, no agent or manager should ever get paid up front. Mm. Anyone who says, "Pay me up front." And I'll represent you, or if there's anything like that, that is illegal and we'll run the other way because that's not a, that's just not legitimate. Mm -hmm. I tell the truth, you've been tempted, tell the truth. We have a question back there. Thank you. Um, so last year, I found out that Jeff Bezos was going But the downside is I never got a response. I know that they were reading my emails, they were opening up my emails, but they were never saying anything. I would invite them to all of the shows that I had, and like I said, I never got any any response. So with that said, do you, would you suggest that I continue reaching out to agents, or just let them find me? And is that probably going to the agent's assistant? First, I imagine there might be some gatekeepers or <laughs> filters or something um, like that. Mm. Well, I, I, I would say, you know what, do both. Let them come to you because you're doing good work. But also, if you want to highlight it, keep sending it to people and um, you might get lucky. You know, a lot of people, it, th that, what you're doing is a, is, is a numbers thing. You know, you send enough times, you may get a couple of hits. Mm. Um, but also, I would say, know who you're sending it to. <clears throat> if you know, you're know you starting out and you have a small show that, that you're really proud of, this one should see, you know, maybe, send, maybe do, your re do the research and send it to a, a younger agent in an agency. You know, I think a lot of people say, I've, I've heard this too, a lot of people say, well, I've sent it to this guy who is the partner or who is one of the bosses there. Like, they'll never go see the show. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you, you couldn't pay them to see the show. You know what we're talking about. But, um, but keep sending out if you're proud of it and keep putting the word out because you you could get a response when you're, when you're, when you're least expecting it and you can get representation from that. Yeah, it's just that it just, there's no set way to do those right, things. Right, right. Um, but also, uh, just further to, to Echo's point before, Represent representatives only get paid on the jobs that they help you book. There's no upfront fee. There's no fee for I'm going to do for me to get your headshots or demo reels or whatever made. There's no charging of any of that. Um, and I know, you know, something something that's dominating the news right now is yeah. the, mm -hmm. yeah. the casting yeah. workshops. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Like, we talk about that too. So you guys are. What are you talking about? What's your opinion about those? Uh, services? Just, just for the background, yeah, yeah, in California, I didn't hear about that. Can I get that? I didn't hear yeah. About yeah. That. Uh, in California, there the the city is cracking down and um, indicting uh, what what they deem to be casting workshops that are pay for play. Mm -hmm. Meaning, uh, you would go to a class or a workshop by a casting director or a casting office with the hopes that mm -hmm. by you doing that, you will get an audition for one of their jobs, and that's and, and that's the only way that you can get an audition on one of their jobs. Mm -hmm. it, you know that is illegal, and um, there is a whole thing. If you go online, you can see a lot of the articles about uh, what that is. Um, I I do think that there are there might be some some casting people who don't do it for the right reason, and they they, they clearly just want to make money mm -hmm. on the backs of actors, but I think the majority of them are in it for the right reasons, which is they're they're providing a you know a, a, a teaching lesson or that they, they can legitimately help with audition techniques mm -hmm. and, um, and and stuff like that. Uh, I I think it's I think it's helpful because if you don't know anybody, yeah. there's no other way to, to get in front of cast directors. Mm -hmm. But I also think actors should know the, the right reasons to do it for themselves. You're not getting there, you're not going there to, to, to pay for a class with the hopes that you are gonna land something because of it. I think if you go into these workshops or classes with the intent of learning, um, and gain skills and knowledge to help you get those to, to, to help you with auditions later on. Those are the right reasons. Um, and I do think a lot of cast directors are, are great at providing you know, information and wisdom. I have a problem with agents and managers doing those classes. Because then you are, that's when you are paying uh, somebody to get in front of agents to hopefully for them to represent you. I don't think that's that should be done. I think if you're going to do it, just do it as a free, uh, as 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 a free thing. You know, meet with actors or go to a school and you know take the time to meet people there. Um, you know, but, you know when this thing is. I'm not I'm not paid to be here. This is I'm here because I I I, I want to see if I can help. You know. Mm -hmm. A class and and, uh, and 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 see if there's anything that I've I've come across in my experience in my life that I can help others. Christine, yes, mm -hmm. that. Yeah, um, you answered part of it earlier when you said that we don't get paid for gigs that you don't book. So mm -hmm. if you have a talent that's under contract and they book their own gigs, they mm -hmm. get to keep 100 percent of those costs. Th those costs. Well, if if it's something that you know you may not need us for, but the thing is, it you know, it's it is a, a total business relationship, mm -hmm. and if you do book something and I renegotiate the contracts, then the expectation is, you know, you pay commission to your agent because that's mm -hmm. that's all set up. And as a follow up, just for people to kind of mm -hmm. get a better idea of uh, signing smart contracts, how long do these contracts usually last? Is it like biannually? Is it yearly? And you what mean, are the an agency contracts? Yeah. Whether the average length of the contract and what are the, in the standard industry percentage? I, I think SAG and whatever the, uh, the the legal rule is, I think it might be just a year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can just renew it yearly. But management contracts don't, aren't regulated, so they can be three years right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So you have to be conscious of what you're signing. Mm -hmm. And she asked, what are the standard percentages? Um, Agents are only allowed to take up to ten percent. That's it. Any, any agent who says it's fifteen or twenty, that's also incorrect. <laughs> However, a manager is not regulated. Their industry standard is ten percent for managers, but you'll find managers who take fifteen to twenty percent. And in what yeah. in what kind of situation would I, as an actor, either superstar or upcoming, need? A manager, like, what what would I be getting more of if I had a manager 
end an agent versus just having an agent? Uh, I, I think it's, in the best case scenario, it's additional eyes and ears on projects out there and, and access to relationships that one uh, may have and the other doesn't. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any, there's no standard, you know, you don't have to take a manager, you don't have to take an agent if you don't want to, but as long as it's providing value for you, because again, you're not, you're not paying, you're not paying anyone off, off up front, and if a manager provides value and helps book jobs and helps you be in the proper mindset to get those jobs, then it's, it's, uh, it's valuable. And what, like, are they you... Could be at any, at, at, it, could also, it could also be at any point in your career. I think, you know, say that you just graduated from, from a school and you, just, and you find two, two people who are an agent and manager who you trust, who you, you really like and um, get along with. That, that's fine too. Or if you're so established that you need someone to help out or um, be a sounding board and to manage your affairs, that's that's a time to do it too. I don't think there's just there's any set uh, calendar or schedule of when you should take someone on. Because some of the biggest actors in the world, they don't have a manager. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if they feel like maybe they just don't need it. Right. And is there such a thing as, for example, I have an agent. You're my agent, we do all this work, but I really want to work in Cambodia because whatever, because that's what's happening in my life. Yeah. And therefore, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm interested in, say, like a manager who has, or another agent who has the skills of booking jobs in Cambodia. Is, that, yeah. is there things like that where yeah. like an agent specializes mm -hmm. in certain? There are. You know, we work a lot with uh, uh, London agents mm -hmm. because. You know, those aren't the jobs that I'm focused on, and they are. Mm -hmm. And so there is a uh, either commission split or a partnership that we do on specific clients who can actually work, are allowed to work there. Bring more fire. So is that um, I don't know what that means. What? Rainbow, <laughs> Rainbow Five. You get like, it's another film. You get to film me in Cambodia. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> um, so is that something like? Were you, okay, I'm talent, mm -hmm. I got called on to Steve McQueen's next <laughs> <laughs> in London. You're not particularly familiar with London, so you call, you find an agent in London who will like handle my affairs there? Is that what's, that, is that or, how that happens? No, that would be more about local jobs. Uh. Because if Steve McQueen's casting a film, that's he's casting it in the U.S. As well, mm -hmm. it would be more about you know, say, a film that's only casting in London, only shooting there, or a TV series that's just based there. Then, if someone is able, has the proper paper, the paperwork to live and work there, then um, mm -hmm. we bring somebody on if, if they want to spend time out there. When you say we bring somebody on, we bring on an and agent. Another agent, yeah. Um, so innovative then would have. You'd have an agent who works for Innovative, but is based in. No, it would be a separate company. Uh huh. Okay. But we would share a client. Okay. And is that something also that you look at based on the, the talents of, or the, I, mean, I want to say like special skills of your actors? Like, for example, there's a lot of British actors who I, I guess can be very convincing American right, accents right. and therefore mm -hmm. do a lot of US work. I don't see that as much the opposite way. And I don't know if that's because Americans can't do British accents as well. That's probably true. But if I, but, yeah. but if I was Trevor Noah and I could do accents from yeah. anywhere really, um, really well. Well, well yeah, that, the, the reverse uh, rings true because if he has uh, a South African agent but he wants to work in the States, that person would probably help him find a, a US rep. Mm -hmm. And so the flip side is, if I represent a British actor who doesn't have uh, a London agent because he spent 15, 20 years here and then wants to go back, then I'll find someone for him, not there. Or, or an American mm -hmm. actor who has, who can do really good Right. Cockney accents or whatever, and yeah. therefore it would be. If they think they can, then we'll try to find someone. <laughs> they, they rarely get cast like yeah. that. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll stop practicing then. Hi, I'm, I'm Zaire. 
Um, so for aspiring agents, what advice would you give to like landing in a mailroom room and then like navigating your way up? Um, I I think you know mail room jobs and agencies are are always available. Uh -huh. <laughs> and oh, serious? Yeah. There's a lot of turnover there. Mm -hmm. Mail, mail, mail. 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 Started in the mail. A lot of success. I mean, you started a lot of success stories. Like well, do. But it's also hard because look, it starts off as a low-paying job, mm -hmm. and uh, and it could be long hours. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say just to, to be successful, pay attention to detail and read as much as you can. Either you know where, where contracts are, are available, or read all the scripts and. Hopefully you'll you'll be in a position where you can share your opinions on stuff. Um, but this is one of those jobs. Agents are one of those jobs where you have to work in an agency to gain the experience and to move up. Mm -hmm. you know, I think people watch Entourage to see that. So he's best friends with uh, a, a guy who's a movie star. He could be the manager. That's a different way to do it. Mm -hmm. But with actual agency work, you have to start mm -hmm. as as an assistant or in the mailroom to. to to go up. So there's not like an agency degree at NYU. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust that either. <laughs> um, did you have that, that was my question. question. Was, uh, okay. Is there like a certification or are there courses maybe we should take to read up on contracts, like entertainment? Um, there, are, there are books that you can read about agencies just to kind of get you acclimated or, or to gain knowledge about it. There's a book called The Mail Room you can read. There's a book called The Agency. Um, but I don't know. I there's there's no formal training for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apprenticeship. Right. That's mm -hmm. the, yeah. It essentially becomes that. Yeah. Are there specific um, from your client base? Are this in New York? Are there specific acting uh, workshops that the majority of them tend to take up? Um, like the majority of Actors, yes. Like I know Susan Bass and is right, like right. one that I keep hearing. Um, but is there another particular one that you feel like a lot of them are coming from, or I think there are a lot of well-known acting coaches around town. Um, I don't remember the last time I referred anyone just because either I haven't needed to, or mm -hmm. I don't know. I I think people end up finding their own acting coaches with me because I don't, don't want to steer anyone in one person. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, but, but who's out there? There's uh, Bob Krakauer is a guy that a lot of people go to. Krakauer? Bob Krakauer. <laughs> yeah. <What>? Oh, <laughs> so Krakauer. Krakauer. Is it Krakauer? It's not Krakauer. It's <laughs> K R K O W E R. No. Okay. He's a guy who I hear. Is, is there a lot? Um, so for a producer that's looking to um, get a letter of attachment, you know, what are some tips that you can give that can help that producer be successful in you know, that course of action? Is it just, you know, um, aside from having a really great script, and is that considered unsolicited material? If a producer came mm -hmm. to us, well, hopefully we would know who the producer is. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, look, young new producers pop up all the time, and, and I think, it's uh, sometimes it's, it's a judgment call for us that all right, this is a person who we think is reputable and we can trust, or we have someone in common that led you to, to reaching out to us directly, uh, you know, without a cast director or someone else around. Um, but also, if you're going to get a letter of intent on an actor, or if you're trying to get it. Make sure it's realistic and, and works for your film as well. Because you know, you're not going to get Tom Cruise to sign a letter on the tech because you have a great script. Mm -hmm. It just will never happen. But you can get you know, someone who's, who's kind of up and coming, who has credits, and who's a budding sort of star name. He, might, he or she might do it. And is the process the same where the script comes and you say, hey, this is an offer that came to you, mm -hmm. et cetera? And yeah. I'll, read it. I'll probably read it first. And then, but then I'll pass it along. Regardless, if I like it or not, I pass it along and say, "Take a look at this. I don't know if it's for us, or I think this is an amazing script. You should do this." And, uh, and I think it kind of goes from there. 
it's something that we want to do, well, we may attach ourselves to it. You know, a funny story is uh, this manager friend of mine, he, he basically really made this director, right, director Jeff Nichols' his career. You know, he's completely cold called him about his client, Michael Shannon. And he, he saw something in this director and, uh, and really helped shepherd him along to the point where, you know, he's getting nominated for Oscars and, and he and Michael Shannon do every movie together. So you could get lucky that way where someone just sees something or reads something on that you have and wants to help you out. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.